good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from. Thank you for tuning in to Diaspora on the Rise with your homegirl, Alex, your host with the mostest. I want to, guys, just ask you to excuse my voice today. I have a terrible cold. Um, it's, I think, it's winter turning into spring, and it's ridiculous outside. It's raining. It's just cold. It's just horrible. These are the times when you miss your, your homeland. You miss Uganda. You miss Kenya. You miss wherever you're from in Africa, and you just want to be in that sun and soak it up. Uh, but since I'm here, I'm trying to, you know, think of home and reminisce while I'm with you guys. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, share the page. Share the page. We have a, an amazing, amazing artist with us here today. Uh, you guys have seen the flyers going around. Um, I know I've been sharing a lot of lady designers, but today I wanted to do something for the men. I wanted to bring somebody who's doing something um, a little bit different. And the reasons that are pushing him to do it are a little bit different. And they're, they're very inspiring. Um, and they're just they're just heartfelt so we wanted to bring him and have him talk to you guys tell him what you know tell, so i'd have him talk to you guys about what fuels his passion why he's doing what he's doing and this is the month of fashion and and and, and artistry where, where you guys have seen us online we've been bringing all these designers celebrating them loving on them and what they're doing and we are continuing in that spirit april is going to be that kind of month we are continuing to celebrate them and what they keep doing you guys have seen us uh you have seen the flyers going around his name is a bit hard he's from ghana um, so all the Ghanan ladies, Ghanan men out there, Ghanan, everyone who's watching, this is for you. Um, you have seen him, uh, you've seen the designs. If you went to uh, DJ Q's Dashiki Night fa uh, fashion display, he was one of the designers and his uh, designs were fabulous. So I'm going to have him um, talk to you guys, introduce himself actually, and say a few words to you guys. And then you guys will, you know, love on him, ask him any questions that you want to ask and just see why he's doing what. Ask him anything actually. He's, he's an open book well let me scratch that i don't want to open like uh <laughs> open like um have you guys ask anything but he's a good guy and he is um he's gonna talk to you guys about what keeps going what what why he's doing this and before i keep rambling all the time let me just give him a chance to say hello to you uh to you guys and then we can continue on so akwasi how are you doing thank you for two for honoring our invite and finally making it into the studio thank so, you for having me i know you're like a bit nervous but you know don't yeah, worry there's nobody like <laughs> There's no one like, uh, you know, going to like scare you and so just be yourself. So mm -hmm. talk to everyone, introduce yourself, tell them what you do, how old are you, uh, if you're single, all those little details. <laughs> <laughs> that, and uh, then we can move on. Okay, my name is Akwesi Odro Bwachi and from Ghana, West Africa. Oh. My fashion line is called Boke. It's the last, it's the first four letters of my last name. So um, I, I, back in high school, I had a friend that used to call me Big Boke. So that's what I kind of got it from. Just went with the bulk, bulk designs, bulk movement, bulk culture, that everything bulk, everything that... bulkful. Yeah. <laughs> so the design is, uh, the, the, your designs are very, very amazing. Um, my producers are going to be showing all the designs online so you guys uh, see them. They're fabulous, fabulous designs. He does mostly for men and there's a reason for that. And then he does some plus sizes for the women. Um, so we're going to have him tell us what inspired him. How did he get started? The story that you're going to hear is a story that is inspiring and heartfelt and it's, it, tear, it tears at your heartstrings. And we're so happy to be a part of it so glad that we got to know about you know people like people like Akwasi who are out there doing everything they can despite what life has dealt what life has dealt them so um Akwasi I keep your, your name I'm gonna just keep changing it out so tell us about how you started how did this journey for you uh start so before I started doing fashion I wasn't really into fashion mm -hmm. um I just really was selfishly like to dress better you know, um, the reason why I really started making stuff is because in 2015, mm. um, I kind of dealt with a lot of health issues, meaning yeah. like um, I had I had a stroke wow. and I also had, um, once I had my stroke, I had heart failure. Oh God. So mm. it went from October 2015 and then I needed open heart surgery in November. So it happened rapidly. Mm. Uh, so it was a really hard transition in my life because I was playing basketball and that was my life. And now I had to do something else. I had to uh, become something else. So what was, uh, I couldn't get a heart 
immediately. So what I have is a LVAD, which is a left ventricular assist device. Wow. Is uh, it pretty much keeps your heart running? It's pretty much like an artificial heart. It keeps you running till you actually get a heart. So I'm I'm on a weight heart transplant list, okay. and I've been on it for three years now. So still waiting for a new heart. And I used to wear I I used to always be a fashionable person. Mm. I used to always want to wear I always wear nice stuff, and I couldn't really be as fashionable as I want to anymore because I had this device, this big device that I couldn't hide it. I really didn't feel comfortable with it. I was very depressed, like all that. So I decided that um, I'm gonna start making my own stuff with the help of family and everybody. I started mm. making my own things. Like first thing I started with is making, learning how to make side panels. Side panels. You didn't even have any like sewing, yeah. like sewing um, history. Like you didn't no. know how to like button a button or no. like sew a button on. No. Or well, I don't know that either. I don't know. I didn't, not I even didn't. one thing. But God, continue, no, go ahead. I didn't know how to do anything. So I just learned how to do side panels because I figured um, by doing side panels, because it, it's on my waist. Oh, yeah. So if I do side panels, it'll open up like the midsection so it'll be able to be covered. Okay. Then people won't be able to see it. So I started with five side panels and then I got really into different things oh. and I started wearing my own stuff and people were like, hey, like, I want what you're wearing. And mm. I'm like, Absolutely not. No. Like, it's like one of a kind. It's yeah, custom made. It's just mine. I'm just going to wear it for myself. Mm. So, But then after a while, people just kept saying, and I was like, okay, I'll just come out. Uh, I'll just do something. And then um, actually um, a lady friend of mine was having a fashion show, Afro-inspired fashion show. Yes, Afro-inspired, yeah. Yeah, and that was my first fashion show ever. And I had like a whole bunch of stuff that, I made that I had uh, my fr uh, a tailor that I use make help me make, and then that was like my first fashion show, and it was hectic. I didn't know what I was doing. I think uh, I wait, I think I was that Q's show. Yes, that was uh, yeah because I yes. emceed that show, and everyone was like everyone was like in tremors. Everyone was back in the background, and everyone yes. was trying to like rush here and there, but that story is amazing. There's so many um, designers who are inspired by, um, oh, you just want to see somebody look good, or you just want to mm -hmm. see a print on somebody, and the reasons behind why, what they do yeah. is, there's so many reasons, but this one is literally close to the heart. Yes. Literally close to the heart, and we want to thank you just for persevering through those conditions and saying, you know what, I'm going to start something. I'm going to do right. something bigger than myself, and right. you shared your, because you, you didn't keep it to yourself. You're like, yeah. I want to be the only person, but she shared it with the rest of us exactly. and we are definitely liking the results of you coming out and just so how were those first months when you started did you did it get comfortable for you I mean you were doing your own designs yeah how were those first months when you're transitioning just trying to work your way through well, your situation the first month starting like it's still hard now mm. but it was extremely hard then because I really didn't know what I was doing all I knew was uh, I wanted the design to look a certain way, but then I knew like mathematically or pattern wise, mm. it wouldn't make sense. So I had to learn how to like pattern and like um, figure out how everything is done. And um, also I didn't want to, I didn't want my line to be like, like for like really skinny women and like, cause I'm a big guy, I'm six, eight. Oh yeah. So I don't want like my line to be for like, Cause there's always custom clothes for like skinny people, like large, extra large, and uh, medium, small. But mm. there's not a lot of two X, four X, like bigger people, like broad shoulders, stronger people. There's not really nothing out there for them. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna make my stuff to specifically serve mm. those. Uh, my kind of people. I want to take a moment and just read the comments that are online because people are watching you. Um, oh my God, you, you look to be a fashionable person. And he, somebody else, Emma, Emma Nabs saying, this, you are a genius. Um, and then we have people saying, thank you for teaching us what you're doing. We're learning from adversity. Um, it's, it's so powerful. Um, we have... Somebody saying you're creating to survive and be clothed, that is so humbling. So uh, the comments are really coming in mm -hmm. too fast for me to read them. Uh, thank you for bringing us into your world, even though you're still waiting for a heart. And then they put some uh, love comments over there. <laughs> so it's, 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 that's the most like, heartfelt 
I don't know what you just, the story is, mm. I teared up when I sent it to my producer. I'm like, did you see this? Like, this is the reason why. Because when you sent me and told me, uh, look at my bio. I'm like, okay, bio, let me go. Re- do, 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 do. I go out and check it out. And I'm like, yeah. God. Like, the reasons behind why we did this show is mm-hmm. to find people like you, to just yeah. have people like you come out and share your story yeah. and say, even though you guys are suffering, even though you're going through so much, it could be much worse, but make the most of what you have. Right. And Diaspora on the Rise is one of those shows that we... we Find people who are doing something because this is amazing that you're sharing your talent with mm-hmm. the rest of the world, despite the fact that you know you have some situation that's pushing you to keep doing it. And it's it's we love the fact that you want to share this with the world and it's like taking you places. And eventually, we're going to pray real hard that that heart works out. But in the meantime, we're glad that you shared this talent with us and we want to thank you for that, um, guys. If you're tuning in, please take a moment to share the page with somebody you know uh, is going to love um, talking to uh, to Akwasi, hearing his reasons behind this, the fashion. Um, talk about uh, your first line. How did it happen? I mean, well, we know how your first line happened, mm-hmm. but talk to us about the line that you're most proud of what's the one outfit that you've created and you said you know what I, i'm actually good at this i might keep going what's the first line and how did it impact you like when it changed so like i'm really obsessed with like roses yes and roses on guys roses on so i'm really i really love the black uh gown mm-hmm. that um was made um i really like that that was my first one. I was like, oh, my God, like, it's my favorite. And I'm really obsessed with roses. And also, I love that I made a half jacket out of roses for a guy, for my big, I did for my that. little brother. He wore that. Um, it was so, like, I'm, that's what really is what, okay, like, I want to do roses. But then also, I wanted to do uh, Afrocentric stuff, but also I wanted to bring in a little bit of, like, the... The Southern American mm. culture, so I started making um, like ponchos, which I call drinking in Mexico. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's like these uh, ponchos that are African inspired, but also look very different. Mm. I started making those as well. So those are what I'm really proud of right now. But right like back then, but now I just came out with my newest collection. Which is called opulence. Opulence. Yes, we're yeah. going to talk about that in a few. Yes, yeah. cool. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, opulence. The reason why I came up with the name opulence is because um, opulence means luxury. Yes. Luxury. So I wanted to, my my thing was uh, there's simplicity and luxury. Mm-hmm. So like I wanted to make my clothes very simple, but also luxurious and affordable. So that's why I came up with opulence. So like I'm wearing one of my newest collection, which is um, the African-inspired suit, which is very comfortable, and it looks it looks business, and it looks um, luxurious, yeah. but also it's comfortable and it's affordable. So we, we, we love the fact that you're talking about We have a few people who are um, talking. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Alex, for bringing this unique, uh, inspiring story, your blessing and inspiration. Thank you, guys. Um, we have a person who's saying, a man who loves roses. Um, I'm in love. Uh, okay. <laughs> Um, and then we say, is the guest single we are asking for a neighbor? We will let you know about those details in a few. But for in a few minutes, we're going to be going to commercial, and we're going to come back with those designs. Uh, you're going to be seeing them online. My producer will keep pushing them for you guys to see them so that you have them. Uh, you can see his designs. You can see his work. You can see what he has done so far. And then we're going to go. We have a guest in the studio who's going to show you how the opulence line looks like yes. and what inspired you to do um, to go through that collection. Mm-hmm. And... Guys, if I'm telling you, if you have a guy you want to show off, this is the line that you want him to wear. These are the clothes that you want him to wear. And uh, Bok, Bok makes such good designs that you, these are the designs you want your man to come out and say, yes, he looks nice. I want to show him off to everybody, that kind of outfit. Um, so I'm wearing jewelry that's made by him. You can't see it up close, but I'll have my, uh, my producers uh, like, zoom in. I'm wearing jewelry that's made by him. Um, he does jewelry. He does the bags. You're going to see that collection in the next few minutes. But for now, we're going to go to Kobasho, and we'll be back in the next few minutes. So uh, stay tuned and call your friends to watch with you. Okay? Bye. Oh, no, no, but we're still here. All right. <laughs>
Well, uh, I think you. It comes, the furs come detachable. Uh, we also have detachable fur on the hands as well, which I didn't bring, but there's, there, and it comes with diff, in two different colors. Uh -huh. There's tan and there's also black. And the trend coat and the uh, overcoat is very, um, it, all could, it could keep you warm. So you don't have to put nothing over it. Is there anything underneath or is it just the material that's just, that's it. There's like like a lining in there. That's yeah. There's a lining in there for like like not for winter, but it's more of like a spring going in a spring um, more, of, but not for winter. But um, also, I came out with the different different inner suits that go with it. I have orange, black, green, red, gray, and yellow. A mustard yellow. So those these come in what I'm wearing. They come in those different colors. Yeah. And also I have five jackets uh, that are available. This is one of the jackets. Mm -hmm. And there's also matching sets for kids as well as um, um, women. Oh, so that's it. Well. Right. So you guys, I mean, if you see how it's like, look. If it, well, I'm gonna have him stand up in the next few minutes so you guys can see how it looks like. So if you can just help us stand, and then we can have it turn and they could see how this collection is. Like, this is an amazing like piece of art right here, guys. If you can see it, I'm gonna have my producer go a bit back. Wow, there you go. This is something I would like. Every, like, go out. You you look like money, even if like. Rent hasn't been paid. I don't know. This is something for everybody. This is, this is one of those things that makes me love this African prints. And African prints right now are, are the trendiest things alive. Everyone wants to have their own piece of African or Ankara or um, African wax print. Is this wax? So it's like genuine this cotton. This is Woodin. Woodin, the material is yes. called Woodin. Where, where, do, where do you source them from? Ghana. From Ghana, straight from yeah. Ghana. How does that work out for you? Do you go back to Ghana and buy and bring here, or do you have someone who supplies you and brings yes, them here? Yes, I have. Um, I have somebody that goes to Ghana and grab gets them for me. Uh, also, I have family members in Ghana that ships it over to me as well. Have you gone to Ghana yourself to just look around and the yeah, fashion? And yeah, I go to Ghana once every other year. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, and have you had a chance of doing a show back there, or it's just no. space? Specifically here. Yeah, so I've been only been doing this for a year and a half. Yeah. So I haven't really gone back there to do a show, but I would love to do that. I would love to do that. Bring like some uniqueness. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ladies, tell us what you think about these jackets. They do have also uh, matching sets for the uh, man and woman. They also have for your twins. I mean, definitely know I'm going to buy my twin one. Um, so, but this is really, really amazing. And we do have some of the designs on my left. Um, I'm going to just stand up and see and um, show those to you. Um, I don't know if um, Akwasa, you're able to stand up and go yeah. back and yeah. So he's going to show you guys how other designs are. He's going to talk about them as well. Let me see if we can grab my wire here and go and show you. Just like we did last time so that you guys can see the new design. Um, I'll bring okay. it out for you. So, what we got here? 
And as I told you earlier, he did say he's like a big man. So he created this fashion line just specifically to cater to guys who are a little bit, you know, taller, bigger. And because we don't we find as we don't find a lot of African uh, designs for people like that. So for people who have like, like basically me, I'm a bit on the caviar side. So you don't get to see these um, outfits out there. So this is something I'm wearing. It happened to look exactly like one of the things that he has in his collection. But I only got the jewelry for today. Uh, but he has amazing collections. And, and designs for you guys to see. So this is the opulence one. I'm gonna have him talk about it. And yes, yeah, so this is the one. One. This is one of the jackets. Um, it comes with a detachable fur. Uh -huh. So for instance, if you want to wear it in the summertime, you could take the fur off. And if you want, okay. If you want, um, you, we also have black fur. So you could get one jacket and get two Different. two sets of furs on the hands and the in the top. So. I have that, and I have it in um, I have it in this color. I have it in black, red, and black, and I also have it in green. Oh. And then I have it in um, what's my other color? I forget the other color. What's your other color? <laughs> oh, I have it in kente print. In ke oh yes, the, the kente, kente print yeah. is um, I have it in the kente print as well, and um, so this is what you're wearing exactly. Yes, I'm wearing the. Uh, so the, wait, let me let them show you. So he's a big man, and if you have a big man out there, like these are that's like he looks very well put together. He looks very very decent, very handsome. And this is this is I think how much is this? Because people I think would so like to know. So this the set is ninety five dollars. And that's really good. That's yes. that's the so the material is what it's really really smooth. Yeah. So this is suit fabric material. Is mm -hmm. um is material used to make suits with. So um the reason why I use this because it, and it's very comfortable. It's mm -hmm. nice for the skin. And it feels really well, and it's and it and it looks like when people see it, they're like nice suit, but it does it's not it's a, suit, a suit. It's a suit. But yeah. I guarantee, like I wore it, and people were like, oh, you have a nice suit on. You have a nice suit on. I'm like, thank you. So like, I, it's really nice. So the rest of the uh, walk us through the rest of your collection. So so the rest is from l last year. Mm. It's just various um, African um, Ghanaian prints, um, basic shirts uh, for the men. These are only these are only fifteen dollars. Fifteen? Uh, wow. Yes, they're they're only fifteen dollars. And what we do is we do pop up shops mm -hmm. and African festival, yes. and then we go to different festivals and we sell that. And if people subscribe, if people subscribe to our emailing list, we give them like five percent off. Oh wow! And, uh, I know I know of people, like but people I know people are interested in the fifteen dollar ones, and those are, the prices are very very affordable for you guys. The opulence one, it's just a new collection, so that price tag may be a bit up because as you hear the word, it's opulent, so it's extravagant, it's a bit expensive, it's luxurious. So how much is the opulent uh, collection going to be going for? So the jackets are going for uh, three hundred dollars. With and the fur or without? With the fur. Okay. With the fur. Um, each jacket comes with their own fur. Mm -hmm. it, this one comes with the black fur, but you have an option to buy the, extra fur. the brown fur as well. And the fur, uh, ex buying an extra set is how much? Uh, for the fur, buying an extra set for the fur is $15 because it's, I mean, it's $50. Because you get the fur and two and the two matching sets. Yes, and right. it looks just like that. And you get the jacket. You it also comes with the with the matching that the goes matching around. The matching that goes goes around it. And he well. does jewelry. Is this part of your collection as well? Well, this is this is jewelry that I got from Ghana. And mm -hmm. then what I do is I put it together. Mix and match. Mix and match the jewelry together. All right. Well, oh my well, I need to be creative. I need to have like an art or a hobby or something I do. I need to be as great as these people because clearly my, the only thing I do is yap all day. So I need to be like doing something on the other hand that people will be like, wow, I'm multi talented and stuff. I'm so inspired right now. So um, this is such a beautiful collection. Let me just have you sit back and we can continue with this. Guys, if you've, it's very, very affordable. The prices are really, really good. The shirts are going for, oh, we didn't ask for the price for the caftan, but. Um, the prices are really, really affordable. It's fifteen dollars for the shirts, and then the opulent collection. Just because it's, as you hear the name, it's opulent collection, but um, very affordable, very, very well made, nice fabrics. Uh, these are one of a kind fabrics, so you're going to be having it by yourself. You're not going to be wearing, the, you know, when you go to mass, uh, to malls, and you're wearing the same shirt with like. 12 other people. Um, the prints are really your own. You don't have, I don't see like a lot of people wearing the same clothes. So that's something. Uh, let me see what you guys have written online. Let me ask. Um, he's so creative. I'm so inspired, bro. We have so many people saying that. Um, amazing. Uh, wow. Um, I'm fighting to keep up with all this design language. <laughs> 
but we, he's, he, I think he's being as easy as possible. So it's not using like big words of you know words that I, even I can't understand. Um, so what's next for Boak? What do you see yourself doing in the next this 2019? So what I see myself doing is uh, making this collection available mm -hmm. to people that want to be luxurious but doesn't have the luxurious money, mm -hmm. but also. Um, Making, making them. My goal is like, if you put on the clothes, you have to feel comfortable. Yeah. So even when I have my models wear it, I'm like, are you comfortable in this? If not, take it off. We're gonna put something else on you. So, it's it's about comfortability. It's about feeling good, and also it's about looking good without having it be too tight or be too loose. Just be comfortable. So what what I see boat going is just being able for everybody to wear it and be like, I feel both, I'm, I'm, I have both full beauty, I feel good, I look good, and you know, just feel comfortable. So the new trend, it's the new trend of like um, fashion designing, designing clothes for a plus size, how's that going for you? I mean, you, we know for, for your size for a man, yes, you have, you have had to do that, but now you've ventured into uh, creating designs for women. How is that going for you? How oh. is it? Like how did that? Well, how did you get started? You're not going to be one of those designers who say, "No, I like the little models," and, mm -hmm. and you know the. How did you decide to like you know? Let me just go this opposite direction. Yeah, because I mean the the fashion industry is very, very judgmental. Like mm -hmm. I was researching on like how to get into different um, fashion weeks mm -hmm. and the requirements they have for the shows is um, you the the model has to be zero to one. Mm -hmm zero to four, like zero to two, and this is the measurements they need to be. So these are the requirements to even submit your collection. So even if you want to do plus size, like you you have to be in a in another fashion week or part of another different things. If you really want to be known, you have to do the skin. And I was just and I was just like, um I I'm not doing that. Like because I'm a big guy mm -hmm. and and um I like bigger women, and um, I feel like every time I go on anybody's website, all you see is all you see is large, medium, and small yep. for everything. It's even, really, really hard even, to go out and shop, yeah. It's barely a woman even sees a size eight. So I'm like, uh, no, I'm not doing that. So I'm going to have larger sizes. Yes, it's going to be more expensive. Obviously, it's more expensive because it's more material. Yes. But... Like, so it is what it is. You have to, I'm doing what I feel like I want my, my I want my brand to represent. So, yeah. And I think, I think that's really good because it's hard for people who are like, especially African women, if we, you, you can't find things that are made for you or, so I have an issue. It's hard for me to find jeans or even pants that fit right because my behind is the size of a muck truck. So it's hard to find things that fit just right. And I, you, like you, you keep going to all these websites, you want to dress like them, you want to go out and do, you know, you know, feel nice and feel comfortable, but it's hard to find clothes that are out there for people our sizes. So it's good like somebody's taking an interest in and saying specifically, that I'm catering to this category of women and I want them to be out there the bulk how do you call it bulk full bulk full beauty bulk full beauty they <laughs> want to feel like bulk full beautified at, at, at the end of the at the end of the of the day so that's really good that you're like you're taking that on do you have anything that puts you down like are there any bad days for you when you're like oh god I hate fashion why did I do this in the first place do you have any down days where you're like yes all what? the time Log logistics and business wise mm -hmm. It's extremely hard, and it's very hard to get the logistics correct. And it's it's like um, working twenty four seven, mm -hmm. and um, sewing and figuring this out. And it's just it's extremely hard. And it's not for somebody who is not. It, th this is not for somebody who loves sleep. Oh like, yeah. <laughs> You have to give it up for now. For yeah, idea, yeah, yeah. So you have to, and the thing is, like, the way I look at it is, like, anytime I'm in a, I'm in a space where I want to give up, mm -hmm. I think about, um, I think about, I'm gonna, I'm breaking through a barrier and somebody's trying to stop me. Mm -hmm. So if I give up, I can't get where I need to get to. So That's true. anytime I get over that barrier, mm -hmm. something great happens. Because anytime, like. I'm I'm about to like give up. I'm like okay. Every time 
through all my life, I try to give up. Something great happens after. So Right afterwards. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I'm just like, I got to push through. And even if I got to take five-minute naps and still work. Pedal through and just continue. Like yeah. that's, That is inspiring to hear. Yeah. That is amazing. That's just a, a good wake-up call for everybody. Yeah, and it's not easy. I mean, um, I get a lot of help from, you know, um, seeing my therapist, mm -hmm. you know, being able to talk to them about different things, my mental health, you know, um, having um, having having a vision board, planning my planning my year accordingly. Yeah, doesn't and this all put strain on on health wise what you have to do? Yes, because I'm saying all these late like you hardly sleep, you have to put up a show. Like just the fact that you had to put on a show last uh, two days ago, yeah. that must have been stressful and, and and intimidating and overwhelming. So health wise, how are you? How do you balance all that? So, knowing you have family and everyone else. So I I go to the hospital twice a week mm -hmm. for a blood work. So for the last three years, I go to the hospital twice oh. a week. So. And I still work a regular job, and so the way I balance this is um, it's hard to balance, and I have to get my rest. But sometimes, like there's days where I just can't even get out of bed. But you know, something you have to deal with. I mean, you gotta keep pushing through. You gotta keep pushing through. Like I mean, that's deep. If if you really need, if you really want to get where you need to get to, you just can't let little things stop you. I right. think they're little things. You might think it's huge, but I it's, just I just got to keep going. Well, yeah. there, there's so many people who are going to be inspired by this message that you just told us, and you have go, you're pushing through adversity, you're mm -hmm. pushing through. Uh, there's nothing as big as health. Anything that concerns health is such a big deal, and you are working through all that, and you are keeping on, keeping on, and mm -hmm. pushing through. You're inspiring like a lot of people. Do you have something to say to all the guys out there who, um, you know, have to come from Africa and come here and try mm -hmm. to build a dream, try to push through? Because everyone is like a lot. Were you born here or you were born? I was born in Ghana. I came here when I was 13. Well, there you go. That's yeah, so. so it's, 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 there are particular things that your parents would have wanted you to do. Yeah. What, would, what did your parents want you to do? So before? my parents, they were very open. My, my dad, uh, my uncle is uh, a brigadier general in Ghana. So I really wanted to be a police officer. So I went to school to be a police officer. I went to school for criminal justice. Wow. That's what I really wanted to do. But basketball led me another way where I played uh, basketball. It went, it left me. So I really didn't, wasn't able to be a police officer. But, but when I, but that was my dream and it's still my dream today, but I can't because of my heart issues. Yeah. But it's okay. But my, my parents were very supportive of everything I did. My dad, um, I didn't know my dad used to like make bags. My mom sold. I didn't know none of that. So, so I guess I probably learned from them, maybe gene wise. And um, my, my parents were very unique because um, they were, they were, um, they went in and out. So, in and out of Africa, so yeah. it was it was very normalized. Well, to me, that uh, you can do whatever you want and don't be f afraid to fail, and you should fail more than you succeed, it's and that's true. what makes you a successful person. So. We fear failure. We yeah. fear to fail. We fear to fail a lot. Mm -hmm. We would rather pretend we're successful than like, say that we failed yeah. at this. And so it's a good message. There's so many guys who want to come from Africa and come here and mm -hmm. pursue it. I know a lot of people um, who are out there doing clothes and, and you know, uh, designers who are like working in a little shop and mm -hmm. they're working, they're creating for their family. Mm -hmm. um, so you, the fact that you come out from Ghana and you over, overcame all these adversities, mm -hmm. all these um, things that were thrown at you and you've done so good. We're happy, happy, very happy that we've managed to meet you guys. Um, we do, Frida Sevalu, thank you so much for always being on online and supporting us and sharing um she's saying we're here if you need plus size models <laughs> so she's offering that um we do have thank you for thinking about all the full size curvy women thank you we shall be praying for you brother um thank you for pushing on even when you didn't feel like waking up uh the messages are really really heartfelt if i had to hearts i would give you one <laughs> uh, may the lord put a way uh, where there is no way for you 
uh, uh, for you, brother. And my thoughts go to you. Uh, great parents, you have you, you have great parents who have given you a lesson, a good lesson. So thank you guys for always um, sharing and loving on the page. Um, he does have a Facebook page, so I'm gonna ask him to just give you all those details. Mm -hmm. And if you wanna purchase, if you're in Boston or if you're around um, the USA and you want to buy some of these designs, I'm gonna have him talk to you guys before we sign out. So uh, just take a moment and just tell people where they where, where, where they can buy your clothes and where they can come and meet you. Well, where you can buy our clothes right now is we do a lot of pop-up shops. So we're, we're about to open an, um, a website, bulkful.com, which is just bulk with F-U-L.com, where we're going to keep consistent updates on where we're going to be with like pop-up shops. And also you can email us if you want any of our designs. We'll be able to get that made for you till we figure out the logistics of it. Just just remember that. Just know it's gonna take a while to get it, but you get your product and it will be quality. Cause quality takes time. So and um on my Facebook is bulkful. It's just Facebook slash bulkful. And uh my Instagram is also bulkful. And then my Twitter is bulkful. So everything's bulkful. So bulkful. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, so, uh, thank you so much for tuning in and sharing the page. Continue to uh, share the page with all your friends and family or anyone you think is very, very interested in, watch, in doing what we um, uh, coming to the show. If you do know anybody who you think you qualifies to be on this show, we want to talk, we want to highlight those guys who have come from wherever they came from, from Africa, and they've come here. It doesn't even have to be Africa. It has to just be somebody who has crossed the waters from their homeland, be it England, um, Scotland, uh, Australia. It doesn't matter, as long as you're not home, but you've come to the land of plenty right here, and you've built, you have built a dream, and you want to do... Uh, you're inspiring your community, you're giving back in any way. Those are the stories we want to hear. Those are the stories we want to share with you. Uh, we weren't able to show you most of his designs, but we're going to redo this uh, show and we're going to post all those designs for you so you can see some of the work that he has done um, for the Afro Showcase. And we're going to put all these clothes online for you guys. Uh, put the emails, the contact numbers, all the information that you want so that you can, if you have, oh, there was somebody who asked if you do custom clothing for them, that they could come to you um, to see if you can design something for them. So I wanted to see, to clarify that, um, put that out there and see what the answer would be. Well, well how I do it is uh, they can look at my designs mm -hmm. and say, okay, I want this made in my size, but I don't do like, you, like custom clothing as of like like you send me like what you want to look like, a picture. and I make that for you because um, I like everything that I make to be my designs, mm -hmm. and not like somebody else's designs as well. That's true. Um, so I guess that answered that question for you guys. Um, next week we're going to be in. We're going to, it's going to be our last week. Um, we've been celebrating fashion designers, um, uh, fashion designers the whole month. So next week would be the our last one. Make sure you tune in. We'll have special, special, a uh, special program for you guys. Thank you for loving on all the designs of all the designers who have come in so far. Uh, you guys have shown overwhelming support for all the designers and loving on their uh, on their products and all that good stuff. So we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for. I see somebody has posted a picture of one of the designs that you had, so I guess folk would always see that. Uh, we're going to keep those pictures coming for you guys so that you can see what Akwasi does for a living, what he likes to do all the time. We do have some of the t-shirts here. They didn't show it, but uh, the material is amazing. Amazing, amazing material. As I said, you're going to be one of a kind. You're not going to be sharing all this. You're not going to be sharing um, your limelight with anybody else, um, but you're going to be superbly well-dressed. So we're going to have you say one last word before we tune out. Well, one thing I want to say is um, never give up on your dreams. Um, you're the author of your own story. You really want, you can write your own endings and make sure that you stay consistent with yourself and your faith. All right, nicely said. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Diaspora on the Rise. Thank you. Have a lovely day. We'll see you next week. Ruachi oni nyirira oni kiriza life no yange for the future life is so hard if it wasn't for this i would take a plan to come fire